Welcome back to Fire to Fork. Today, we are doing Steak Up Wav. Now, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, I'm sure I'll get ripped to shreds if I'm not. Uh, but Steak Up Wav is basically a really, really, really nice steak and sauce um, with a lot of pepper. So if you don't like pepper, just tune out now. Leave, not worth your time. Uh, it's a bit fancy. It's bloody tasty. It's intimidating in its name and it's intimidating when you see a couple of the ingredients, but the actual process is really easy, really fun, and is actually a really good way to impress your mates if you wanna, well, you'll, you'll see. There's kind of a fun bit in the middle that uh, will definitely, yeah, get your mates a bit excited. And it's um, very uh, fire related. Now, uh, before I start this episode, I also wanna say, I've decided, I don't give enough, stuff away on this channel and i'd like to give away some books so i'm going to give away a book every week till i stop feeling like giving away books just because i think it's a fun thing to do so in this episode there's going to be a code word uh i don't know what it is yet uh i can rig this competition if i want because it's my bloody competition so you know sue me um but i probably won't i'll probably randomly select um, someone who comments the code word down below and I will send you a book and a patch and a couple of stickers or something. Um, anyway, let's get on with the episode. First things first, let's light a fire. I haven't actually mentioned this yet. Zippo stuff is actually now available at BCF um, and a whole bunch of other retailers soon, but definitely available at BCF right now. So, um, Zippo Tinder shreds I've got there. Just gonna grab, I'm kinda gonna just do a, like a traditional cross hatchy sort of thing. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna light it first, just cause it's hard to get the lighter in afterwards. Okay, bad way of lighting it, Harry. Flame goes up. Uh, and yes, fire to fork Zippo lighters are now available for pre-order on my website if you want one. Uh, we have the butane one, which has like a little jet lighter thing, and we have the normal gas one. If you get the butane pack, it actually comes with the normal gas one as well. Um, and I am stoked with them. They look kind of like this one, except they're silver. Oh, I just love the smell of the Tinder shreds, to be honest. All right, leave that for a few minutes and come back when it's useful. Good boy, Fred. Come here. Come here. Good boy. Good boy. All right, that fire is doing useful things. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm going to quickly grab myself a stubby holder for my beer. And let's crack on with the prep work. This is important because when this meal kind of starts going, it all happens quite quickly. So, wash my hands quickly just to um, appease any concerned Karens. Yes, don't worry, I'm allowed to have a fire. Um, checked all the usual regulations, blah, blah, blah. I don't risk my livelihood to have fires illegally. Now, check this out. Yeah, these are my new knives from Osbro, but it's not just that. Check out that engraving. So if you want one of these, well, you can get a full set. If you've already got one or two of these knives, you can get the leather roll. Uh, and Osbrine now does custom laser etching um, with, you can just have your name, you can have your friend's name, whatever. And I will be soon selling fire to fork ones with my logo on them. Uh, and including on the, um, oh shit, whoops. Including on the uh, leather roll. So. Dropped my shallot. Uh, here's a little bit of boiling water, and I'm just going to whack some beans in there. I'm just going to chop the ends off these. It's a lot of beans for one person. Uh, chuck them in the boiling water, chuck them on the fire for a couple of minutes. Now, I'm going to chop up some 
shallots or shallots depending on where you're from. Oh, actually, I might try my new little paring knife. Little tiny one. Oh, that's nice. It's my first time cutting with this. Ooh. Oh, I like that more than I should. Oh, that's really nice. All right, if you're gonna get just two Osprey knives, get this one, the cleaver, and get this one, the paring knife. For fine stuff, this is just by far the easiest knife I've used. That makes that so easy. That's mince, basically. Put that to one part of your breadboard. Throw this stuff in the uh, fiery bin. Drink some beer. I'm gonna do a little bit of mushrooms. <clears throat> Look, you can do whatever sides you want. I strongly suggest roast potatoes because roast potatoes and steak are, and sauce is one of the greatest things ever made. But it turns out I've done steak and roast potatoes one too many times. I have many more plans to do steak and roast potatoes, so I'm, I'm gonna take tonight off. It'll be back, don't worry. I'll have some garlic with them, actually. We don't need much of this, just like it, just a little bit of a little taster of it. One clove is tons. All right, just a little, that's a minute and a half, two minutes. Blanch, bit of steam, perfect. Good to go. Well, good for the next stage. I think I'm gonna need two pans for this to do it really properly. But I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna do it in such a way that it makes it too difficult for people to do. So I'm gonna do this in one pan. Um, Cause I just think that like not everyone carries two fry pans. In fact, I most of my time didn't carry two fry pans. So I'm gonna do this in a one pan. I'll show you how to do it. Butter. And this is just for the sides. Quite a lot. Into your pan. I'm just gonna heat that up. Now that butter's melted a little bit, I'm gonna chuck in just a little bit of the shallots. Shallots cook quite quickly, about the same rate as garlic. And our shrooms. A touch less heat on this. That could go for a little bit more butter, I think. All right, while well, waiting for that, I'm just gonna grab my steak and I'm gonna start, that's straight out of the fridge. I want it fridge temperature. I don't want it to, um, I don't want it brought to room temperature like you do a lot of the time with a lot of steaks. Um, a standard kind of what I call supermarket thickness. So like one and a half centimeter thick steak. I think if you want to cook it medium rare, it should be fridge temperature to begin with. Um, and otherwise, I just find that they overcook a touch too quickly. Uh, before, as in, when I say too quickly, it, kind of, it doesn't make sense saying it. Um, what I mean is it cooks internally before the external part of the steak can get a good sear. 
that's what I mean by it cooks too quickly. So the outside's still kind of grey when the inside is getting grey. And I'm going to grab a quick bowl to get that stuff out in a minute. Okay, these are starting to soften up and release some of their moisture. So I'm going to just add in those green beans. Actually, I don't need that bowl. I've got my little pot. I'll just use my pot. That can be less washing up. Great. A little bit of salt and pepper in there. Tell you what goes better than salt with mushrooms is a bit of soy. They just love that umami flavor. A touch of soy, little bit of pepper, not too much because this is a very peppery dish. Oh, so good. All right, I might just grab these, get these other little things ready. So, <clears throat> get this beef stock thing. God, this is like a razor. I don't mean to be like plugging these things so heavily. It's just my natural reaction when I use something. It's just like, oh, cool, that's exciting. All right, these look pretty ready. All looks nice and soft and cooked and delicious and buttery. So I'm gonna chuck them back in that pot. Doesn't matter if they're not completely cooked because they are gonna like rest and stay warm. So with this pot, I might actually just adjust this fire pit. This is the um, compact bry, by the way. Still just my favorite thing to cook on at the moment. Just is. Sue me. Okay, now the pep, the uh, pièce de résistance, the steak. So we want to give that a little bit of pepper, not too much. That's not pepper, that's salt. A little bit of salt and a ton of pepper. Now my grinders you adjust by loosening this wheel at the bottom. Um, most pepper grinders you adjust by loosening a little knob at the top and it makes the handle looser. Um, and that, the looser the handle or the looser this knob at the bottom, uh, the coarser the pepper. I want, that's just fallen off, I want it just holding on. So your handle should be loose. And I want to, look at that, barely cracking it. The coarsest pepper you put, this is beautiful. I love the adjustment on these grinders. That is like, I was thinking I'm gonna to have to do this in the mortar and pestle and I tested it and I was like, oh yeah, this is good. That is like half a peppercorn kind of thing. Now, pepper becomes a lot less intense when it's roasted. So it might look like this is just gonna be overpoweringly peppery. It won't at all because we're going to cook it and it'll become milder. Some people call me a rookie for cooking pepper at all. Um, but if you over pepper a steak and then roast it, it's delicious. So sue me. Look at that. Now I actually want to wash the butter out of this pan or we'll pour it out at least. I'll give it a quick wash. Uh, and that's because butter will burn. So I'll quickly dry that out. And I'm going to grab some neutral oil. This is rice bran oil. You can use peanut oil if you're not allergic to peanuts. Or sort of uh, canola oil tastes a little bit. Uh, anyway, a tasteless oil. But those two are the best, in my, in my opinion. I'm going to go and drop this down. All right. Bit of neutral oil. What is that? Jesus, it's a pterodactyl, big beetle, hmm, there you go. All right, let's take that bit of oil, go and chuck it on the fire. And I've, I've dropped that fire right down as close as possible to the, the grill as close as possible to the fire. I'm gonna get this steak on. Now I should also mention this is not the right kind of pan to do this on. This is a, a non-stick pan, and it's the pan I use because it's the most multi-purpose pan. I would love a heavy-bottomed stainless steel pan, and I have one, and I could absolutely bring it. But I wanna show you with the stuff that I actually use in the wild. Like, I'm not, I go out and film these things, but I don't wanna show you like it fully 
posed and be like, oh yeah, I just happened to carry this like heavy bottom cast, heavy bottom stainless steel pan, not cast iron, stainless steel in this case, because I'm fond. Um, I actually don't want something non-stick. It, it, it's a bit different. So, but the reality is this is what I'd take on a trip. This is what I do take on all my trips. And I wouldn't take that pan just to cook this one meal. So, Jesus. Even though it's useful for a few others, it, it's still, it's not worth carrying an extra thing when we can just make do with this. And not just make do, thrive with this single pan. All right, let's chuck this steak on. See that sizzle. That's it. Surely this bloody beetle. Oh. I'm gonna do that for about two minutes each side, get a good sear on it, and then we'll rest it. Two very boring minutes later. Look at that sear. That is beautiful. Are we looking? So if you want to do this on like a cast iron pan or something, that'd be perfect. Uh, or a spun steel. And just before that steak is finished, I'm just going to drop in some shallots. Gonna swap out the shallots with the steak. Whoop. And this steak comes up here to rest. Look at that crust. Oh yes. Okay. Probably too many shallots there to be honest. And to cool that down a bit, and to obviously add flavour, I'm going to chuck in some butter. Actually, let's get that flavour out. Let's get that flavour and put it in those shallots. To do that, cognac. And this is the bit where you can impress your friends. The shallots are browning, so it's ripping hot. Bit of cognac, and there we go, the flambe. The great thing about cooking on fire, it's really easy to do. <whistles> How fun is that? It could actually do with a touch more cognac. Now you can use other spirits, you could use a port, you could use, um, it won't be as good with a port, it won't be as good with a white wine, but they will do, and you can't flambe a white wine, and flambe obviously means the flame. Okay, now I need to get this heat off a little bit, Oop, wrong screw, that's good. And we're gonna grab a bit of beef stock. And drop that in. We'll start to boil that away. We're also gonna grab a bunch more butter. Wherever my butter knife is. Big lump, like that. We're also gonna add just a dab of cream. So, as usual, all the um, all the amounts will be in my rest in my video description, so you can get the full recipe there. And once all that's added and it's boiling, you add this is kind of the weird bit. Now it's the same peppercorn. It's just um, one is roasted and one is brined. So we're going to add some green peppercorns, which are brined. You can get them at any supermarket. This brand is a bit fancy, but you can just get the uh, always fresh brand from Coles and Woolies. And that's sort of, that's crucial to um, steak a poivre. 
Want that to reduce a tiny bit and thicken. While I'm waiting for that, you tend to clear up, get ready for good sure B roll, but also cognac. Seems rude not to. I do feel like a wrapper or something, bringing out like a bottle of Hennessy. All right, I think we can get these beans and whatnot. Oh, I need to wipe that plate. That is disgusting. I might get a different one actually. Much better. I mean, still not great, but much better. Now, sides. Get a few of them in the right direction. Then it looks like it was sort of deliberate and they weren't all just mixed in together in a pot. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's how it's meant to be. That looks good to go. And then you get your, your sauce and you don't pour it over the steak, you pour it under the steak. And that is because otherwise you drown this beautiful crusty steak. That's too much liquid, not enough bits. And everything is slightly downhill. Let's do it this way. You want to put your beautiful steak on top because, yeah, otherwise you drown it and you lose that crust that you've worked so hard on getting. So I like to slice my steak first. Then you can show off how perfectly it was done and it's easier to eat. And doesn't that look better than a steak covered in, oh, that's just all a bit squiff. Doesn't look like that look better than a steak covered in sauce. I think it does. That is not that well presented, but still ready for couture to spear roll because I'm in the bush. Actually, that little paring knife, paring knife, paring knife, paring knife. Let me know in the comments. Um, I'm pretty sure it's paring knife. It's actually, probably going to be a really good steak knife. Yeah, it is. All right. So, crap presentation aside, bush steak. Ah, poor pavoir. Yeah, steak. Need a bit of salt. Okay, try again with a bit of salt. It's my happy place. Steak, sauce, veggies, fire. It's my happy place. That's delicious. Um, yeah. I don't have a lot else to say. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to nail this. I'm going to sit there, drink a little bit more cognac, maybe have a beer. And then tomorrow morning, I'm going to film my next episode. And the cognac and beer, surprisingly enough, is going to be the reason I film that next episode. It's going to be a hangover one. See you then. Cheers. A poivre? A, 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 a
a poivre, a poivre, a poivre, a whatever. Steak with cognac-y, creamy stuff. Bloody tasty.